Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Marcus. Here's some special music. The band is Gris, the track is Voutu Danser, and the genre is depressive black metal with deep beauty in it, smiley face. Now I also noticed it's a winking smiley face. <laughs> Am I getting duped here? No, I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people find beauty in a lot of depressive black metal. I don't think we've listened to anything from the DBM genre that uh, hasn't had somebody in the comments say, I find deep beauty in this, or it's just a beautiful track. And like, yeah, um, I, I can't say I've, I've been there yet. I haven't reached that point with a, a depressive black metal track, but I appreciate uh, everybody's perspectives, and I'm, I'm sure that they legitimately feel that way about the music. So uh, I am a little skeptical going into this. I have seen the words beauty and depressive black metal put together many times. I've never, I can't say I've ever felt that. But let's dive into this and see what Gri is bringing to the table today. I was expecting a, a heavier introduction there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. Definitely has a, a darkened beauty to it. Lots of symbols, by the way. Usually I hear the general class of symbol. Oh, it's depressive black metal. So sorry. The volume in production is a bit wild in that we're very close to maximum volume, but it sounds so quiet. Oh, 
I'm, I'm pretty tolerant of a lot of sounds, timbres. But this specific style of harsh, and this isn't the first time we've heard it either. We've listened to a couple DSBM tracks that uh, the vocalist utilizes this style as well. It just never works for me, and it's even more jarring on this track because I am enjoying the instrumentation. how yeah some of the bass kick uh, rhythmic ideas are introduced into some symbol complexity here uh, at least it was the symbols got less and less complex over that 16 bar phrase the bass kicks in that last section though were just... I, I suppose it fit with the sound of this song, because that section was kind of low, mid-fi anyways. I'll, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about it now. It's just a very dry, bumpy sound. It has all the punch, but none of the impact. It's it's kind of bizarre. But when paired with the production on the guitars, I think it fits. took so long to get to that peak and I think uh, even though we had bigger sections throughout the song um, it all paid off to hit that point oh oh
interesting that the vocal layers are center and left now, whereas last time they were center and right. Not center and both. All right, by now I'm sure most of y'all are familiar with my tastes in music, my biases, what I prefer to listen to. And it's actually isn't going to be about the black metal. Um, it's going to be about the endings. Um, <laughs> the lyrics, I think, better have a really good reason for the ending because otherwise I have very strong opinions about it and none of them are, are positive. Um, I don't want to dig into this too deeply just want to give my thoughts on this and then move on it, just in case I'm wrong but I think it's a good opportunity to talk about this. Uh, structure has meaning in tracks and how you go about doing things in what order uh, it says a lot of stuff, uh, especially when you have a general story being told. Here we had a very gradual rising of energy and sometimes dropping back down and rising of energy, dropping back down. And then we eventually hit the peak. All right. In in story writing, this would be the climax. And after the climax, we have our denouement, which is the falling energy or falling action or whatever you want to call it that uh, leads to the resolution and we had that at the end of that penultimate section we had a fade out into just like this hum and I think there was a guitar chord and like we just needed an ending and I thought after a couple of uh, I think it was clean electric guitar uh, chords I was like oh they're just gonna do this little outro and after like eight bars, we kick it back into something that at least to me sounds very close to the the chorus, the same section we were just in. Uh, at least the vocal bit sounded familiar. It's, it's in a language I don't know, so I'm going mostly off of pitch there and rhythm. Um, and the guitar work and drum work were very similar. So it might have been something new, but it sounded like the section we were just in. And we run this through once more with a couple of variations in the production primarily, but maybe there's some new lyrics going on. And then we just abruptly stop the song with like this really quick strum and then like a half of a beat slide to get uh, like a, a pitch decrease on the guitar and then that's it. And like we had this phenomenal ending already set up that comes off of the peak the pacing was perfect, and then we just slap on this section that had no buildup to go into it. There was no transition into it. It literally came out of nowhere at a point that seemed like it should have been, or at least could have been an ending. And then we get rid of the ending we had for this just abrupt stop of playing. Basically, they had a perfect ending and decided to use a different one and not swap them out, but append it to the old one. Um, and so, at least for me, the pacing of the entire song is is interrupted, and the ending doesn't feel as good. And I'm talking about the, the ending ending, not just, you know, the final few minutes of the track, but, like, how they specifically decide to end it. The final few notes is very anticlimactic, um, and, and doesn't resolve anything that's that the song was doing. Maybe this is all on purpose. Maybe the song is about uh, a false ending, right? It's called depressive black metal. You know, what if yeah, the, the final, the, the penultimate chorus is like the person gets everything they want and then it feels like the song's gonna end and it's like, psych out, actually everything sucks again. And like, yeah, that fits with the themes of what's going on. And from an artistic uh, perspective, that would work and if the lyrics go that direction you know that's fine but if they don't if the lyrics don't support the ending at all there's nothing in the music does that does 
and it was um it was just not satisfactory to me and maybe that could be just the purpose too maybe they don't want to write satisfactory music maybe they want to write music that disappoints people in which case that'd be an external uh motivator that i'm not privy to but i suppose i've never thought about before <laughs> You know, the, the lyrics and music don't need to support each other if there's just an external thing. That kind of goes along with a lot of, uh, like, avant-garde music, where there's very little synergy within the track, but the synergy comes from understanding what they were attempting to accomplish in their experimentation. Uh, it's that external component. So, yeah, I mean, there's like a lot of things that go t go into it. I don't want anyone to walk away from this and be like, dude, Brian just disagree. Like, he said they're garbage. He said they don't know how to write an ending. Uh, like, I'm not throwing shade. But for a first-time reaction, I am reacting to this off of a first-time listen. Just, dang, that whole ending has me... It just I'm not happy with it. I did not enjoy listening to the final minute and a half, two minutes of this track, uh, because of the story they were telling and the twist at the end. You know, it's like when you watch a movie and they have a twist. You're like, dang, that's pretty good. You watch it over again. You're like, eh, everything fits, right? You know, you're like they did so much work uh, leading up and placing these clues so the ending fit. And then you watch another movie with a twist, and you're like, that made no sense, and it actually ruins the character arcs now. And it actually just makes the movie worse off because they didn't just write a straight ahead ending. They decided to put a twist in it. That's what this feels like. It's a failed twist. Um, but again, you know, first time reaction, no extra details. I, I could be way off here, but that's that's my feeling. That's, that's, that's what a first time reaction is. That's my first time reaction to this. Now, I will say... I I enjoyed the musicality here. Uh, there is a beauty in the darkness, at least in the uh, the cleaner sections. It is uh, some melancholic chord progressions, a little bit of sadness, a little bit of darkness thrown in there. But uh, it's it's done with beautiful timbres, and there's just this elegance to the chord progressions um, and the little flourishes they have within everything. And it is just beautiful. Then you also have the ambient, uh, like, chordal stuff going on around it all. And it's it's just, it really is beautiful writing. And I enjoyed every bit of the four-ish minutes that we had in our uh, first time going through here. And when we returned to it, I enjoyed that as well. Uh, you know, I already said my piece on the vocals. They're not, they're not what I enjoy. Um, and I have a slightly more difficult time tolerating them than I do other harshes I don't like, specifically, you know, growls. Growls are just not something I typically enjoy, but it could also just be exposure. You know, you guys have done a, a fantastic job of pushing growls on me, and I've gotten to a point where I, I can deal with them. Uh, they, they don't... Uh, it, great on me as much but this type of dsbm vocal is I'm, I'm not there for it yet i'm not there with it yet uh i'm not there yet <laughs> it's it's a bit irritating to me uh, it did improve a little bit when it got fleshed out and widened and then supported with the secondary vocal we got both tracks there getting that uh texture harmony going on in the black metal sections that part wasn't as bad. It felt closer to a typical black metal scream there, but uh, the screechy, whiny version of it uh, that we got in the quieter sections was just not for me. And then, of course, the coughing and the gasping of air and, and those squeaky exhales uh, when he loosens the compression on his false chords and you just kind of get a little bit of a squeak coming out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just little... Little things that, that just don't work for me. And uh, I think the thing is, too, is that it reminds me of a screaming baby. And uh, I think after you've spent a year-ish waking up every two hours in the middle of the night to feed in, uh, you know, a newborn. Um, and then, you know, the year after that, where they might sleep through the night, but they also scream through the day now and, you know. That that whole that whole process just kind of weans you off of wanting to listen to screechy screaming. 
forever. Like, I'm, I'm just done with it for good. Uh, no, I mean, that's mostly a joke. I'm sure it's something I could um, get Stockholmed into, kind of like with growling and black metal in general. <laughs> Again, another joke. Uh, but yeah, it's just, that's exactly what it reminds me of, though, is a baby. And having to do that once, it, it just, in, it just, it creates this uh, relationship in your mind. Whenever you hear anything close to it, uh, it's just annoying. And that's what I feel here. And, and I, you know, the sad thing is, is that there's an aspect to this style of music that I think works, right? The, the concept of being so overwrought with agony that you don't form uh, even something that would be close to a typical harsh vocal it just kind of comes out as screechy screaming crying stuff and there's something very raw and primal about that and I can appreciate that from an artistic angle I can and you know I said it's kind of sad because there's a possibility that I will never be able to appreciate what these vocals bring to uh to a track because I have that that association with waking up in in the middle of the night every hour on the hour <laughs> and losing my mind for several months so you know I might not ever have that that connection with this and I I, uh, I appreciate and understand what it's doing because uh, it just dawned on me I was like dang Brian you're a bit harsh on that and it does have you know artistic integrity <laughs> again I, I don't want anyone to think I'm throwing shade at Goody they they do what they do very well they do it just really is like every sound I don't like combined. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're chill, not chill, uh, acoustic musical bits are solid. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, we do get the black metal parts. And I enjoyed how they had a little bit of the acoustic flair in here. Uh, there's a flourish in the guitar line during the acoustic bits that gets repurposed and reimagined in the black metal section. Uh, guitar line, actually, same thing. That I liked it. It connected the two a little bit where it didn't feel like we were just doing soft to heavy, but actually looking at uh, almost variants of a single idea or looking at a single idea across two opposite ends of a spectrum, maybe. And there's a lot of commonality in the composition between the two, it really is a sonic shift. And so I found that to be pretty interesting. Even when we came out of it the first time, I think we took the bass kick pattern and put it on uh, one of the symbols for like a bar to uh, carry over this rhythmic pattern. And there was a lot of that going on in this track uh, from what I heard was reusing something from one section to the next no matter how different they were in order to make it feel more cohesive like a story being told which is I mean that's why the ending felt so weird to me because everything else works so well together it literally comes out of left well not literally um, but it it really does like on, on the most extreme way of viewing it it comes out of nowhere the whole song is extremely cohesive in a multitude of ways, despite the jumping back and forth between extremes. Uh, and so the ending does feel very unexpected because it does something that the song had never done up to that point. And so, you know, coming from, coming at it from that perspective, it feels intentional um, in some way. And I just, I don't know what the intention was. Um, so... Uh, was there anything else I wanted to touch on here? I mean, the production kind of bounced back and forth. It was uh, very clean and clear for the acoustic section, and then really gritty and muddy, and I don't even know. What's what's the word I'm looking for? The bass kick was really weird, though. That's, that's particularly what I want to look at there. But it was still clear enough to hear what everything was doing. It's just a, a muddiness that, that got injected into it in the heavier sections. Yeah, I think that's about it then. I enjoyed the composition. Didn't really enjoy the performance because, you know, that's when you add in the sonic qualities. I probably would like an instrumental version of this. 
which is an unusual thing to, for me to say. Uh, but there's some really gorgeous moments in here that uh, just clashed with the sound I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, lots of artistic uh, choices, though, that work well together. Even if individually they don't work for me, I can appreciate that they all come together to do a very specific thing. So let's see some lyrics. I know they are in uh, French, I believe, so i got to translate that. And hopefully everything kind of comes through the translation and not much is lost. And, you know, it's depressive black metal, so... It, they're depressive. They're also a bit, uh, how should I say? They're a bit over the top. They're a bit extra. They're, well, they might be a bit emo. I'm a shadow of a shadow, idly strutting around on the shimmering flagstones of the lost, tri of the long triumphant cobblestones. Uh, we already have the idea of this person who barely exists in society. Even says that no one can believe me and no one can see me. Uh, what's worse is they feel that they are cursed with a plague. That anyone they touch is immediately infected. And so they can love, but they can never be loved. Because they have to keep everyone at arm's length for fear of making them just as sick as they are. But they do fall in love, and someone falls in love with them, and they decide to end the relationship at some point. And our narrator is heartbroken over it. it says, My soul is slashed by a hundred thousand daggers torn by her countless razors. And uh, from this point on, it just turns into a, a pity party of... Uh, self disses I suppose uh, met with contradictory statements he says I'm a made up ugliness uh, I'm a cured plague I'm a crumbled cross and an atheist Jesus and that's how it ends and like this idea uh, of depression definitely pervades this. They have a very negative self-image and when they do get into a relationship they feel like they're going to wreck it uh, at every corner and when they inevitably do they blame themselves and sink further into their depression and their self-image crumbles even more. Yeah, this is you know exactly what happens. And so, like I mentioned, the uh, the vocal delivery matches the anguish. Like, I get it. Not my cup of tea, but from an artistic perspective, it works very well. As for the ending, though, those contradictory self-put-downs is the ending. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it needed it. Uh, they kind of detract a little bit. Like I said, they're all contradictory too. Uh, so it, it could mean some stuff, but it could also just be things that sound interesting. But regardless, I don't see the need to do the fake out ending. At best, you could have put those lyrics in an extension of the chorus we were already in and then let the song end naturally. Uh, the fade out, sorry, the fake outs into the abrupt ending. Again, there might be an external choice for it, external reasoning for it, but the lyrics nor the music seem to indicate uh, a purpose for it. It kind of just is. And I still feel, after a first listen and a little bit of a dive into the band and their lyrics, that it, it stands out and detracts from what the rest of the song was doing. But 
Those are just my thoughts on Gris Votu Dancer. Votu Dancer. Sorry. Uh, still practicing my French. <laughs> Let me know what you all thought. Did you enjoy this? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Give me your own perspective on. Maybe you have your own take on the ending. I'm all ears. Let me know down in the comment section. Above the comments in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, ways to uh, <laughs> a link to my music. There's a lot of ways to support the channel. I'll reiterate that. <laughs> and a link to my music in there. Uh, above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow, continuing on with title tracks. Hopefully, the next title track we check out is not 82 minutes long. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.